QuickBooks Online 2024, PayPal bank feeds, import data to QuickBooks. Get ready and some coffee because we get work done on time with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online bank feed practice file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports as we do every time. The reports on the left hand side within the favorites. Right click it on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. Right click in the PL profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, to do the same, as well as with the trusty TB trial balance. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you can search for it. Let's tab to the right, close the hamburger, change the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 033124 tab, selecting the drop down so we can see it on a month by month breakout and run it. Let's tab to the right, close the hamburger again. Change the range, 010124 tab, 033124 tab, drop down so we can see the months and run to refresh. One more time, tab into the right, close in the hamburger, and then we'll change that range, 010124 tab, 033124 tab, select in the drop down months and run it. I almost forgot on that last one, that last rep barely got that one out. Let's go back to the balance sheet. We've been working on our bank feeds and we've been first connecting the checking account with the bank feeds. And then we noted that you could connect the credit card account. So we connected the credit card account down below. Now, other things that you can connect to the bank feeds could include other checking accounts, savings accounts, and possibly even brokerage accounts if they're with your financial institution where you might be investing, say, in stocks and bonds, for example. This time, though, we want to connect to the PayPal, which will act kind of like another checking account. So let's go over a quick little history of the PayPal. Note that PayPal used to be able, many people used it to facilitate electronic transfers more easily than on, on their other banking system, possibly being able to facilitate transactions with other institutions and possibly even, you know, in other countries and that uh, type of thing. From a content creator side of things, many people used something like a PayPal as an intermediary in order to collect funds, which would be more secure possibly with on their website or payments from third party platforms. And in that sense, then PayPal was kind of an intermediary platform to help facilitate the transactions. Uh, and then, but more and more these days, PayPal is being used to make normal payments as well. So if you're making payments with PayPal, more and more, it's going to look like a checking account. So how you're going to set up PayPal uh, within QuickBooks might depend in part on how you're, what your flow looks like in terms of how you're treating PayPal. 
Is it just a source to facilitate deposits um, from other platforms that you need? And then you're just going to transfer that into your bank account as soon as you get the money? Or are you using it more like a, a checking account? And are if you are having more advanced uses of it, are you using it in more difficult transactions, possibly with other currencies where you might have fees related to the transaction? And do you want to break out those fees? All right. So why is that important? Well, let's go back to the first tab and let's go to the transactions. And then we're on the bank transactions. So if we look at our checking account, let's imagine a situation where we're just going to use PayPal as a, a tool for us to collect money from possibly from like our website or possibly from uh, another uh, platform that wants to pay us through the platform of PayPal rather than going to, a, to an electronic transfer to our bank. And all we are doing then is taking the money out of PayPal as soon as it goes there and putting it in our bank. Well, if that were the case, then we might not need to connect the PayPal, right? We might say, do I need another PayPal up here to connect to the PayPal? Well, if you're just using PayPal to say, someone sent me money, YouTube sent me money, let's imagine they sent it to PayPal for whatever reason, then I'm gonna wait till it hits PayPal and then I'm just gonna transfer it into my checking account. Then you might, you might just say, well, it would be easier for me not to connect the PayPal because I'm just gonna wait till it connects to the checking account, something similar to the Stripe here, uh, which, which is a similar kind of intermediary platform. And I'm just gonna record it as revenue once it hits my, my checking account. That would be the easiest thing to do. So if, if I had my own website, for example, and people paid me through PayPal sometimes, right? If, if all the money that's going through PayPal is from my website, and I'm just using it as a tool to facilitate the transaction, which is a secure format of the transaction. And then I take it out of PayPal as soon as I get it and put it into my checking account, then everything that is deposited from PayPal, I can assume came from the, the transactions for my website. And I could just record it as revenue once I see the transfer into my checking account. You see how that might be the easiest kind of format in that type of scenario. However, once you start using PayPal, you might start using it for other things. If you're paying things out of PayPal, like you're paying expenses out of PayPal, for example, and sometimes that's just an easier thing to do. Sometimes that's an easy way to connect your, your uh, online payments. Then it's more likely that you're going to need to connect it to uh, uh, another bank feed if you could, or use the app, which we'll talk about shortly, because then, then you're going to want to pull in all the transactions that you're paying out of PayPal. So if you're making normal monthly payments out of PayPal, then you probably want to treat it like a, a checking account. Or if you get paid from multiple places, let's say YouTube, your website, and you know another platform all pay to PayPal. And then as you get the money in PayPal, you transfer that money to your checking account. Well, then it gets a little bit difficult to categorize the payments. If you want to break out the payments that came from YouTube versus your website, versus the other platform, then it might be a little bit more difficult to to differentiate that if you transfer it from PayPal into your uh, into your QuickBooks with one lump sum, right? So that might be another reason why you would need to break out the PayPal as as its own uh, as its own checking account that you would connect directly to the bank feeds or use the app. You have a similar situation with like Stripe and other types of payment platforms. If they're working as an intermediary platform, the question is like if Stripe was facilitating transactions from my website, do I really need all the transactions that are coming from the website in QuickBooks? Most people would probably argue no, it might be better to use that, to use your website detailed data for Stripe to see the transactions there and just pull in the end result. Meaning once the Stripe hits my checking account, I'm just going to record it as revenue. If I have a website, I don't need to try to track all of the sales to all the individual customers that might not help me. All I really want is to be tracking 
the, enough to have their, them on my email list, right? So I can send them basically emails. I don't need to see every transaction in QuickBooks because that will uh, log down or slow down possibly the system. It's more detailed than you need in QuickBooks would be the general idea. All right, so let's imagine that we're gonna connect PayPal and we think that we need to have uh, PayPal as like a checking account system with the bank feeds. There's two ways that you can basically do it. You could add PayPal with the normal bank feeds. So if I link to a bank, for example, then I can search for PayPal and they have the PayPal connection here. So you'd have to choose, you know, the appropriate PayPal, but you've got your, your uh, PayPal connection possibly this way. And down here, here's the, here's the PayPal.com right here. And then they have a PayPal app. So the pay, if you go to the app store, if I close this back up and I open up the hamburger and I go down to my apps down here and we search, we go to the search field. I'm going to close this up and I search for PayPal. Then we have uh, the uh, PayPal app here and the PayPal apps. I think this one only has 15 so this one has the 2,671. So I think that's the main one. Let's just take a look at that. I'm not going to connect the app, but then you can look at the, you can watch the review on the app here. And basically the app uh, seems to basically act similarly as the bank feeds. However, the PayPal transactions could get a little bit more uh, detailed when you look at them because they might charge fees for the transactions especially if you have different currencies of the transactions so they can get a little bit complicated if you deal with multiple currencies for example and you have fees related to the transactions so if you just use the normal connection uh, of a bank feed i think it's going to be a little bit more streamlined that it might not possibly break out some of the added items such as fees and whatnot and and just record you know the net amount whereas i think uh, the app is an attempt to do a similar thing as the bank feeds but give you more detailed information so you can break out some of the transaction in more detail now there's pros and cons to either of those methods right because just like the question as to whether i should connect paypal or not if i if i have a very simple system and i don't need to connect paypal it would be easier not to if i just deposit it into my bank and I, I'm only using PayPal to collect the deposits, I might not connect to PayPal because it's another step I don't need. The app is a similar issue possibly, right? Because it's gonna give you more detail. If you don't need that more detail, then the app might actually be more complex than it needs to be. So you might just go with the normal kind of bank feed. But if you wanna break out that more detail, if that becomes important because the fees are messing up your flow or something like that, the, the app might be a better solution than connecting with the bank feeds. So you can see here, it's got three stars, 2,671 on the rating. You can look at some of the ratings uh, down below. So you've got some you know happy and some non-happy ratings to, to see which of those would be the best way to go. So I'm gonna close this out uh, and I'm gonna go back over here. Now we're gonna imagine we connect kind of like the bank feeds uh, in that we'll have an upload just like we did with the checking account. So I'm going to go back into the transactions and we'll upload another card here for basically PayPal uh, transactions. So it will act like us to us as though another, you know, checking account connection that we would have. So remember that the general process when you connect a new account is you can link to it here, you can search for the account, and then it's going to ask you to add uh, an account for it, and then you can set up the actual uh, general ledger account. The general ledger accounts are over here. So let's actually do that first. So I'm over here and I'm gonna say, let's add another account, new. And then I'm gonna say, let's put in place a bank type of account. And it's gonna be a, we'll just call it a checking account. And I'm gonna call it PayPal, PayPal. And so there it is to do it. And so I'm just gonna save that. And so now we have our PayPal account. If I select the dropdown, you can connect to the bank here, or we can go again back over here now that we have the account set up and we could connect to the bank 
and then tell it to go to that account or we can upload from a file, which is what we will do. I'm just gonna make some mock transactions over here in Excel that are come that we're gonna imagine coming from PayPal date. And this is gonna be the amount and then the description. So let's say on one, three, two, four, let's say we had 3000 come in from uh, 3000 from YouTube. And then the bank feed data would have, you know, their bank feed jargon and whatnot within there. Let's say on three, uh, seven, two, two, four, we also had another 1000, 1000 come in. And we'll say that that comes in from our, our uh, website. So let's, let's put it in from, let's just say it's an online platform. So we'll just say it's an online platform. Duh, duh, duh. We'll just make it generic. And this would be uh, two, four, and then let's say we have on 115, another 1,250 uh, from our website. And then uh, we'll put some numbers behind it do, 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 for the bank jargon. And then let's say that we made some payments. This is gonna be 115, two, four, 115. Two, four. Now the date is formatting funny or different. Let's do it like that. And then, so then let's say that we had some money going out on one, uh, 27, two, four. Let's say we not, we have money going out of 230 to out back again, <laughs> out back steak house. And then uh so something like that and so then so so let's go ahead and save this i'm going to say save it do, do, do. all right before i save it i also want to make a couple more here i'm going to say let's say on o two uh o one two four we had a transfer out of here for uh let's say four hundred dollars that goes to the checking account and we'll practice our bank transfers here and let's say on two uh two eleven let's say two fifteen two four we have another transfer going out which was uh uh let's say four hundred and eighty dollars to the checking account and let's say on two uh twenty one two four we have another two hundred going out to the checking account and let's do a couple more just so we can practice our transfers on 225 uh, four, we have another uh, 550 going out to the checking account okay so that should be enough to practice our transfers so let's go ahead and save it and then I'm going to say file save as and we'll save it as a CSV file, comma, delimited file. And so, okay, and then we'll save it like that. And then let's go into our bank feeds and I'm gonna add another card. So I'm in the bank uh, transactions, selecting the drop down. I'm gonna upload a file, upload it. It's gonna be do, 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 a, there's the 151, it's the PayPal file. Upload that one continue and this time i want to select the drop down and not have the checking account but the paypal account that we set up so it's going into the pay if you didn't have the paypal account you could add it as you go but we added the paypal account so then we there we have it is the first row uh, a header it is one column that looks good this is the format of the date month month day day year 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 dates lining up description lines up amount those are our headers that are pulling in so let's continue and everything looks good so right the youtube's an increase online platforms an increase our it should be out website but our website's an increase outback these are all decreases and then the transfers so that looks good let's continue and say so quickbooks will import that's what we want you to do and then
It says import completed. Boom, it's been done. All right, sweet. So we're gonna say then, so here's gonna be the information. So it looks just like you know the checking account now because we're using it more and more like a checking account. And so now you can see that if, uh, if we, is it, is it my on the, I'm, there's my PayPal. This is the, <laughs> there it is. It looks so much like the checking account. I was in the checking account and didn't even know it. Just like me being a poet and not knowing it, you know? So, but any case, here's the, so, so now you can see that if we waited till these cleared the bank, these items are also going to be on the uh, checking account side. And, but, uh, but if, when they clear the bank, they're just going to come from PayPal. Let me show you that. I'm going to say, save file, save as, duh, duh. and I'm just going to make this an Excel file. So this is going to be number two. And then I'll put, this is going to be for the checking account. So let's say on the checking account, I'm going to have these same four transactions, but they will be positive. Duh. You know how I can change that easily? just a excel trick for you i can copy that and then paste it special and then subtract boom now it's positive copy paste and then delete that oh fancy and then i could say from paypal or paypal transfer right boom so i'm going to save that and then i'm going to file save as as a csv file you will have these files if you're using, uh, if you have access to these. So a CSV file, these valuable files. And then, oh, hold on. Uh, it says, do you want to replace it as a CSV file? Uh, bank feed number two. I'm going to say, let's say, make it number three. I thought it was an Excel file before. Let's save it. Number three. And then, okay. And then I can go back in here. And this time I'm going to put these into the checking account. So I'm going to say as though they flowed into the checking account, upload from file, upload. And here's the new, the newbie is number three this time. Why is it up here instead of down there? I don't know. I think that's the one though. I think that's the one. And then I'm going to say continue, put this one into the checking account boom it's going to be yes columns one date formatted date date description description amount amount mui bn got two letters for you bn bn so this is going in from paypal when we transfer it so that looks good let's do it and see if it works so it's going to transfer four of them import complete all right then that's what i'm talking about all right so then we can see down here that of course as it hits the bank it's going to be paired to what happened over here on paypal because it sees them both it's not matched because matched if it was if it was matched that would mean it's matching to a transaction that has already been imp that has been imported already these are both in bank feed limbo neither one of them have been connected to our actual financial statements yet now if they if i didn't have paypal then what would happen i i wouldn't have this tag and i would only see it come through the bank over here on the deposits which i could just record as revenue when they come through however i don't have the detail i can't see what the revenue was for this way it might not matter if there was only one source of revenue and i knew it was all coming from youtube or something right that i could just call it youtube revenue and i wouldn't need the paypal account but in our case we had multiple revenue sources here so that might make it worthwhile to connect because now i can distinguish the paypal from my website because that will come through the bank feeds on the paypal side and because i'm actually using paypal to spend money uh, then I don't know if Outback Steakhouse takes PayPal, but but if I'm spending money on PayPal, then I'm kind of using it like a checking account. And you would think I would need uh, the more detail in there. And again, if you were doing transactions that were in another country or something where PayPal, there's going to be fees 
to, for the currency transfers, then then you might you might have more detail with regards to the fees where if you wanted to break out those fees in their own account, it might be worthwhile to have another app, right, that could break out the fees, which may or may not be useful to you. You might just say, I don't really need the fees are kind of maybe immaterial with regards to the be nice to break them out, but maybe it's more complexity in the system than I need. Uh, uh, so, so, so that those are the trade-offs that you have to kind of think about. So we'll record these transactions and think about those bank feed transfers in essence between the two bank feed files and future presentations. As we do, we'll see uh, the difference between using an expense form to record a transaction versus a bank deposit form versus a transfer form. And we've already kind of seen that with a similar form, which is the pay down credit card form. All of these forms could be used to record the same kind of transaction going from PayPal to the checking account, for example. And so we'll, we'll say, why would one be better? When would you want to use one versus the other? What's the difference between those forms? We'll get into that in more detail next time. Nothing new has happened to our, our data on the balance sheet income statement or the trial balance, which is just the balance sheet on top of the income statement as of yet because this data has just been pulled into what I call bank feed limbo, PayPal bank feed limbo, that is. And we still need crucial information before we can pull it in here. As with normal bank feeds, the one piece being the mandatory piece, an account. We need to assign it to an account. And we'd also would like to assign it to a customer or vendor, whether it be deposit or a uh, decrease.